Today on IODP Expedition 342, Newfoundland. Morning. Morning. Morning, guys. I'm so excited. I can't wait. You know, I'm impressed each time I see the ship again, you know, how many times I've seen it, but it's, it's so unique. And I think if you see it the first time, it's just very impressive to see this vessel with the rig and you see there's something going on, on that, in that place with that many people who can live on that ship. I think if you come back, it just rings all the memories you've had on the ship and you're just impressed again each time. Feeling good. It's an auspicious beginning. We're moving just as the sun is rising. Very Tolkien-esque. I like the fact the captain said all aboard is coming aboard, all ashore is going ashore. I'm excited. It's the first time leaving land for this long. It's great. We are so excited. It is, it is an unbelievable moment for me. Yeah, I can't exactly. believe it is a it's lifetime cool. experience. Yeah, yeah. Being around the, the Titanic site will be exciting, although we won't see anything, but it will be something special, yeah. I'm excited to see Corcom on deck. <laughs> May the rock gods be kind. Go see the rocks. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Lots of mud <laughs> and, and good people and good collaborations and a lot of good science. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, but it's for sure. Priceless. Humbled. Man, I've been ready to go. Here we go. We go back in history here and look at a time where, the, where we know the climate was extremely warm. And we found a place that the principal investigators of this expedition have, through many years of work, they have found this spot where we have a, an archive in the ocean sediments that we can read and we can, we can learn about the relationships between the oceans and the atmospheres, temperatures and chemistry and so forth. Now the really great thing about this is not only that it has the, the, the majesty of being next to the Titanic, um, but that the Titanic went down where it did because of the intersection of a set of currents that probably have been very long-lasting features. So welcome to Titanic Tales. Uh, we're sitting here in the Gulf Stream, uh, the warm water current that flows up the east coast of North America. We're not very far from where the Titanic sank about a hundred years ago. And as you know, the Titanic ran into an iceberg. Those icebergs would melt in the Gulf Stream, but they float down from Greenland, uh, carried by cold water currents flowing along the east coast of Canada. And we're interested in the process with our drilling of why that happens and how long has that process been going on. With this warming trend, uh, we don't think that future Titanics will have anything to worry about because there won't be any ice anymore. So we have, for example, this whole ridge here, and you notice it has a series of offshoot ridges that have formed basins in between these ridges. This whole thing is sediment. That's a big pile, you know, roughly 800 meters of, uh, of mud. Climate history is recorded in little tiny critters that die and deposit their shells in the sediment. Unfortunately, on land, sediment is usually eroded. So if you have mountains rising up and there's sediment somewhere deposited with time, that sediment is washed down into the sea. And it's only in the sea that we actually find very uh, well-preserved and continuous records of Earth history. And even in the sea, we have to be careful where we go and we have to do a lot of surveys to find the best places where the sediment history books are extremely well-preserved and have all the information that we need. And 
we will uh, spend considerable time in group sessions to work out exactly how we go about this. We have some tools and we have some templates and we have... Uh, scientists come from different disciplines because it's only by putting different types of information together can we create reliable interpretations of what happened in the past. We also have another diagram showing, you know, for each section, you know, what the sampling plan is going to be for. We have a tag for a discrete sample for, uh, for a paleomag test we're going to do. Very discrete. <laughs> Just two centimeters long. <laughs> we're going to work around the clock, 24 hours. We depend on every person. These are all extremely smart people and they will learn quickly, but they come on the ship and they don't understand yet how this all can work together in a very intense fashion. And so um, we give them instructions um, so they learn what their labs look like, the instrumentation, the methods, the workflow, the pace, their roles most of all and expectations of what they have to deliver. And that's, the, that's what happens during the first few days on the cruise. Just kind of getting everybody up to speed on the various um, types of responsibilities that we'll have, so, as sedimentologists. I think you're, I think you're our lead This is really cool that we can, that there's so many people around that come from different fields and different areas, and everybody's a specialist in something. It's, it's in a way humbling, but it's also very energizing. So you see suddenly that you're, you're part of a big picture, and, and you listen to these introductory talks and people give little seminars and their little group chats and people talk about their investigations after the cruise and they start to realize that this is just cool and then they start to find their place and their role. My name's Caitlin, and I'm the Education Officer for Expedition 342 on board the Joides Resolution. It's my job to make sure you guys know everything that's going on, with all the cool science to what we're having for dinner that day. Wait a minute, what are these guys? Captain Terry, do you know what these are? What about you, Dan? Do you know who these guys are? You do? <laughs> are they from the Eocene? Maybe? Well, it's a good thing they are, because that's the same time that we're drilling for, for our expedition. Maybe, if we're lucky, we can talk to this Hyracotherium. We might be able to learn something from this Ambulocetus, or maybe this Darwinius right here. They're all ancient mammals, and you know what? This guy actually might be our distant cousin. So I think we're really lucky to have them on board, so we can learn all about the past that we're drilling for on board Expedition 342. Well, we just arrived at the first site, uh, we dropped the beacon, we are in position and they're just putting up the BAG and we are looking dolphins. They're dolphins! Where? In the ocean. <laughs> we get on site and it's the first thing we see. They're pretty far away, but we got on site and we saw a bunch of dolphins first thing, so it has to be a good sign. First is the excitement going to a new site. We, we, we go down with the drill string and stick it into the sediment and recover something that has never been seen before. And that excitement is, is just tantalizing. And then we get the material and, you know, it's not always a winner. Uh, sometimes the material is, looks better, is more useful and, and sometimes not. So the next best moment is really when we drill a site, it turns out that it provides something for everyone. It, it yields all that information that, we're, that we were seeking. And the, the whole group is so excited knowing that there's years of work to be done, knowledge to be gained from, from the material. I think those are really the best moments. <laughs>